Hi there, this is Tommaso Zilia of Music Theory for Guitar.com, here for another music theory review. Today we are going to talk about how to have new and interesting ideas while you're improvising in real time. So, let's say somebody plays a backing track or somebody's playing some chords for you and you are improvising. I can see different scenarios playing out there, depending on your experience. Uh, but what I see may, most often in intermediate players is that they play one idea and they stop. And they play another idea and they stop. And they play a third idea and then they stop. This creates two big problems. Problem number one is that the solo sounds like a one idea after another, like a collection of unrelated ideas, because because it is, okay? You're playing an idea and thinking of the next idea and then you're wiping your mind completely so there's nothing left of the previous idea and you play your second idea and then you think of a third idea and the third idea has nothing to do with the previous idea. It's a bit of a problem. It doesn't, look, it doesn't sound connected. It doesn't sound musical. The second problem is that it's really, really hard to do because hey, you need to come up with a new idea every few seconds. A completely new idea every few seconds. This doesn't really work. I mean, after a few minutes of doing that, I see some of those players saying, hey, I'm done, I have nothing left, I have no more ideas. They played everything they know in those few minutes. If it ever happened to you, you play a solo and at a certain point you're, you play improvise a solo and at a certain point you're like, hey, I have nothing left. Yeah, maybe this, what you're doing right now, is going to help you. So, the idea here is to find a way to get ideas, so that, to get inspiration if you want, so that you don't play the same three notes all the time. At the same time that those new ideas want to be connected, you want them to be connected to what you played before. Okay? And what I'm going to show you today are two very simple strategies to do that. They are very simple, but don't underestimate them, because if you train those, your solo is going to sound much better immediately. It doesn't matter your level of technique, it doesn't matter how fast you can play. You can play slow stuff, you can play three notes, but if you apply this system I'm going to show you right now, those three notes are going to sound good. Okay? So, the two strategies are linked, so let's learn them in the, in, in, in the right order. The first is the simplest one, the simplest one to explain at least. You will have to train that again. So, let's say you're improvising, okay? Let's say you're in A minor, okay, just to keep it simple, and you're playing a phrase. Okay, nothing complicated. Good. Rather than just stopping and playing something else, remember this phrase and play it again immediately. Okay, so play it once. And play it again. But Tommaso, you're gonna tell me right now, this doesn't sound good. Not yet. Okay, it's an exercise. So, at the beginning, I want you guys to play every phrase twice. That's it. Play an improvisation and everything you play, you play it twice. Why we are doing that? Because I want you guys to develop a bit of musical memory. You're gonna see that if your phrase is too complicated, it's going to be hard to remember. But it's also gonna help you stretch your uh, musical memory to try and remember this complicated phrase. So again, everything, everything you can come to your mind, play it twice. Okay, everything, play it twice, play it twice. Now I'm doing this without a backing track right now, because I want you guys to see what's happening without being distracted. But of course, you can do this with, and actually you should do this with a backing track play something, and then play it again. Now, 
when you can do that reliably, that's where you can start to expand these. So what are you going to do? You're going to do that. Here's exercise number two. We are still on the first strategy, but that's exercise number two. It's you play a phrase, let's call this phrase the first. And you play another phrase, the second. Now you play the first phrase again. This is harder because now you have to remember the first phrase while you play the second phrase. So you're going to play the first phrase. Then the second phrase. And the first. Okay? That's how you're going to do it. Now, I don't care if the phrase is exactly, exactly, exactly the same or is slightly different. What I care is that you get the same idea in, okay? Because right now I just play something in the phrasing was slightly different. I don't care if the phrasing is exactly the same. I don't care if all the notes are exactly the same. It's enough to play roughly the same phrase. So, again, exercise number one, play every phrase twice. Exercise number two, play a first phrase, then a second phrase, then play the first phrase again. Then reset. Play a third phrase, then a fourth phrase, then the third phrase again. Then reset. Play a fourth phrase, a fifth phrase, and a sixth phrase, and a the fifth phrase again. Then reset. And so on and so forth. And do this in real time. You will see how you're going to start thinking at your improvisation in a completely different way. And this allows you to connect all your phrases better. So all of this is strategy number one. Don't play ideas once. Play ideas more than once. Verbatim. Okay? No, it doesn't sound bad. If you use it with taste, it sounds good. And you can hear this in many solos, many very famous solos. Don't think you have to play something completely new every single moment. Good. Let's, let, let's now see strategy number two, which is slightly different than strategy number one. Again, one was verbatim repetition. In strategy number two, we still use repetition, but we use non-verbatim repetition. We use modified repetition. There are many ways in which I can take a phrase and modify it. Right now, I'm concerned with only one way of doing that, which is sequencing. Because sequencing is really easy to do, okay? Uh, let's say your solo is mostly on the pentatonic scale, okay? For this, to do this second strategy, you need to know the five pentatonic patterns on your guitar, okay? All the five of them. Etc, etc, okay? So let's say your first phrase is this. Very simple, no? Now I want to repeat it, but I don't want to repeat the same thing. So I'm playing the same phrase, but on the pattern just above. Or the pattern even above. Or even above. Or above. And now I go full circle and I do... I'm an octave higher than the original. Okay? Now saying you have to go in order, not saying you have to repeat it immediately, but the phrase you, impro you, provise, you just improvised or improvised two or three phrases ago can be reused if you play it again on a different pentatonic pattern. Okay? It's very simple. So, first phrase, something different. First phrase again, but on a different position. And then something different. First phrase again in the original position, something different. And then. And then I play the, the, the first phrase again in this position, in this position, and a little variation on the phrase in the last position, and then move back and conclude my solo. Now, what I just played is really simple. But it sounds together, you see, it, it sounds like music because I'm not putting in new ideas all the time. I'm putting in new ideas only when I need variation. 
I'm going to need variety. Otherwise, I'm just recycling one idea and playing it all over the fretboard. Again, that's a very, very simple strategy. And, but you can get a lot of mileage out of this if you train it. And you're going to hear, once you get this into your ear, this idea of repeating phrases and sequencing the phrases, you're going to hear that it's in a number of famous solos, and in fact, many of the solos you remember by heart use these. Because your ear is already attuned to the sound of repetition and the sound of frequency. In fact, when many... I'm going to use a, a bad example here, but may, when pop uh, music writers want a song to get stuck in your mind, they repeat the chorus a thousand times. We don't need to do that, okay? But it's good for us to use a little bit of repetition, whether it's verbatim repetition or it's sequencing repetition, so that the solo enters into the mind of the listener and the listener keeps remembering this solo. The solo becomes memorable because you use those little tricks. So, again, recapping. Don't uh, play one idea then a new idea, then a new idea. Because this makes your solo sound disconnected and it's really hard to do. It's better if you use some repetition. To develop this sense of repetition, play every phrase twice at the beginning, every phrase you improvise you play it twice, or play a first phrase, then a second phrase, and the first phrase again, and then repeat. And then later, you can use a second strategy, which is sequence, your phrases and every now and then repeat one of those phrases but in a different position. I did this with one phrase repeated in many places but you can have two or even three phrases in mind and every now and then uh, play them again in a different position. I hope this is going to help you create better improvisations and until the next time, enjoy! <laughs>